Hello, good afternoon. I would like to start my speech uh, by explaining you what was my will to elaborate a study on female volunteers in the Spanish Civil War. And cho having chosen this topic, uh, well, I must say that it was my personal interest towards the feminine resistance against uh, Frankism. And my interest uh, was related to studying construction of gender identities, trying to uh, get some distance of the translation of these by an imaginary and wrong imaginary that fell uh, on uh, traditional models. Also, the existence of primary sources in a platform such as Sidbrin makes this exceptional field of study given the fact that from which, sorry, we can create knowledge and giving answers to the phenomenon of international volunteers, both female and male, in civil wars, specifically from the gender viewpoint. This study was created because we wanted to reflect the relation, the possible relation of the potential transgression that these women were uh, main character or, or generated, and if the contrary, their experience uh, had to do with the their role in, in society at the moment. Another issue we thought of was to think of whether these women could be considered active uh, subjects of history or they were merely uh, people accompanying their loved ones and actually they were unconsciously uh, traveling with them to this war in a foreign country. Let's remember that this study, even though it is necessary, it doesn't count with an extensive broad um, bibliography. The very scarce resources we have available actually are based on um, bibliographical abstracts or fragments they left as memoirs. And uh, thankfully, thanks to Sid Breen and other similar projects, we have a great support for researchers because we have information in a very clear and accurate way. And uh, also the database uh, that we created thanks to Lourdes Prada's work has been devoted specifically to female international volunteers and uh, 250 women have been introduced in this database. They are me around 40% of the volunteers recorded in Sidbrid. It's quite a significant sample, but I would like to say that these conclusions are not arbitrary. And uh, what I mean is that they are worth, uh, they, they we should prove re we should reanalyze these conclusions indeed. Whatever the case, this was the database. It's one of the many examples. We wanted to define a very general profile of volunteers because they came in because of three different reasons. One of them being already residents here in Spain and being already party of left-wing um, syndicalists, organizations, or political parties. Secondly, people who came for the People's Olympiad in Barcelona. And thirdly, uh, when they enrolled directly to the brigade, the international brigade. International solidarity was a task carried out by many women from their own uh, homelands without ha having traveled here, but it was the first way of uh, women participation in war being, uh, you know, being, being sol uh, given this solidarity, they sort of break this feminine archetype of caterers and nurses because uh, in general, female solidarity was uh, defined as sorority and uh, the carer role. But there were many women who actually organized this female solidarity. For example, the Duchess of, uh, of Afon. Uh, the reason why some of these women actually participated in an active way in the Spanish Civil War was the fight, the fight against fascism and the defense of freedom, because they believed the Spanish Civil War was a just war 
a fair one. And they understood the situation happening before in the Spanish Republic and also in that war conflict context. They believed it was a great scenario to work towards female liberation. So those changes here happened really quickly. Uh, compared to other contexts where the statu quo didn't change. So there is a relationship between feminism and anti-fascism. Some female authors believe that some of these women lived a sort of transition moment in their lives, the end of a love relationship or their career or studies. It's quite a sort of radical idea because we don't have primary sources actually stating this uh, this fact. There is a common, a common um, idea of uh, a better world. Uh, melianism in the sense of meliorism, sorry, in the sense of improving the world, because most of these women came from Western countries, mainly Europe, and we also find women coming from non-European countries, such as former colonies, the States, Canada, South America, etc., places where these volunteers, either men or women, would quickly identify themselves with the Republican claims and the Republican main ideas because they defended liberalism. Most of these women were between 20 and 35, 39 years of age. Not all of them belonged to the working class. We find those women belonging to a sort of middle range or even bourgeoisie with sort of mid uh, level of studies, high school or even university studies. With regards to their civil status, most of them were married, a few of them were widows, and we believe uh, we want to add the sort of unknown label to the women of which we don't know their, uh, their, their civil status. We don't really know whether they are single women, but maybe they were. They didn't want to talk about it. The same with their ideology. Some of them have been labeled as unknown, but for some of them, say the label committed or engaged because they wanted to highlight their humanitarian ideals far beyond any other ideology. Some of them did actually uh, speak about their political ideas, so they were either communists, anarchists, or socialists. Being anarchists, the majority, uh, the majority. In any case, all these women acted to defend liberties, and as for the roles, they they uh, actually took on had to do with this had to do with caring for victims. A minority went to the front, or uh, actually um, took important decisions at the brigade's uh, um, structure. Some of them, as I said, decided to care for victims or care or have play a more of a maternal role. This is what it was thought or expected from a woman in war. Also, we have a few interpreters and translators, and this labor, this work, sorry, has to do with women who belong to mid or upper classes, which, who already had a solid education, not only the knowledge of languages, but also some of their studies, which helped uh, play this role. And also traveling to a country uh, in war was already a transgression because they were uh, their own owners of their decision-making process and they dared to access this war context, which was always related or talked or seen in a, in a masculine way. So this transgression, uh, actually, they, it empowered them because normally women were relegated or they had to do in a compulsory way some tasks uh, always related to the charitative world or, or uh, as caterers, as we said. So this becomes them active subjects in history, which were totally conscient of the decisions they took. We shouldn't really see them as adventurers and girls looking for summer loves. 
uh, jumping onto these dangerous situations. No, no, no. They were very conscious of the situation and they were very independently and autonomously taking these decisions precisely because of this political and humanitarian um, link or beliefs they had. And again, empowering as a collective, this is very, very new because uh, women had not seen before in wars before. Uh, the war is, again, this space where women is empowered. They are identified as a collective uh, forever because they share this, uh, vital, exp this vital experience and uh, brands them forever. Thank you very much.